What's up YouTube? Welcome to part one of the Predator Armor build video. Uh, I'm going to have to split this one up into multiple parts just because it is quite complicated. And this is a pretty tough project. I'm not trying to discourage anybody from attempting it, but I'm just going to be honest here. It's not easy. Initially I had thought when coming up with the patterns to use something like a motorcycle, uh, not sorry, not motorcycle, but a dirt bike motocross uh, plastic armor, something like that that I could just attach pieces to and cut pieces out of as I went along, but I couldn't find anything thrifting to use for that. So I ended up having to build my own foam shell. Now I do show how I do it, and some of the pattern pieces that I use for tools to make the cuts to round the shoulders will be in the patterns on Facebook. And if I do decide to put them up on Etsy, I'm kind of unsure about that just because. This build's a little, little out there, but I may still do it. I did save them all. Uh, they will, of course, be taken in photos and put up on Facebook. If you're computer savvy, you can download that and figure out how to print it out. <laughs> and I wanted to say thank you to all the new subscribers. And thank you to all the past subscribers. And thanks to everybody for, for participating in the recent giveaway. I really do appreciate all of your feedback. And... Let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. Okay, so the first thing I did was measure the, the width on myself, shoulder to shoulder. And I took this piece here, which came from a roll of this EVA foam mat. I want to say it's uh, usually around $10 for a six foot roll. Pick them up at Harbor Freight here in the States. And elsewhere, I don't know. Uh, mine from my local cosplay supply store. So that helps a lot, too, that I have one of those. And I cut a hole in it to put my head in. That's about the extent of it so far. And try and think of it kind of like uh, a sculptor with clay. It starts off with a big block or wad of clay, and then, you know, takes away all the excess. Well, this is it with the excess. And I used a heat gun just to heat it enough so that it doesn't have too awkward of a shape. And this is the front, and this other piece is the back. There's not much you can tell except the hole in the front goes down a little further. And I made this large enough I can just put my head in it without doing anything else. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some triangles out of here and use contact cement to glue this back together so that the shoulders slope down on both sides. And I'm going to start drawing and cutting out the rough shape that I want for this upper armor piece. All right, so I've gone ahead and started to come up, cut out some of the shape of the back here. And initially, the width of this EVA foam roll was two, uh, two feet wide, 24 inches. And what I did was I took first this little pattern I made here, which is kind of like a triangle, but the slide, the the sides here are slightly concaved. And that was to help round out the shoulders. I found the center line of the shoulders, I drew my V on both sides so they matched up, and then I cut it out and glued them back together using contact cement so I have some nice curvature on the shoulders. Then I found the center part of the bottom and I measured 6 inches, and you can see right there was the center mark for the 3 inches, and what I did was I went ahead and drew out how I wanted the one side to look, cut it, and then flipped it over, traced it out so that both sides match equally. And next I'm going to move on and figure out the shape that I want for the front. So before I go on to the front here, I need to have the back properly fit. And you can see here this is from where I said I cut the first slit. What you'll notice there is an odd shaped triangle over here. And I need this to be brought up more so it has more of a curve. I could sit here and heat it into it, but ultimately it's going to look awkward and not as shapely as what you would want custom fit armor to do. So what I did was I took my, my triangle piece, which is symmetrical, and I folded it straight down the middle. And then lining up this end of here with the actual side of my piece I was able to line this corner up with my actual corner and that's how I get my half triangle I'm gonna go ahead and cut those out inside of, of my red line that I've marked here and contact cement them and glue them back together to help pull this back piece up and give it more of a proper curve alright so I have glued together 
these seams on the back sides here to help round out the rear shoulder. And then I've also gone around and here on the front took my triangle pattern, folded it in half again, and used that to cut out these here. And I'm going to contact cement these as well to help finish rounding out the shoulder area. Alright, so I have glued these front V's together and I've gone ahead and I cut out a side piece and then took the piece that I cut out, laid it over here, traced around it to get this generic shape and then sloped this up, flipped it over, did it on both sides, found my center line, uh, cut a line straight down it, cut out this shape, folded it over, and cut it out on the other side. So the whole thing is symmetrical without me having to have a giant pattern, which probably isn't going to fit me because it's not meant for my body shape. And this is being built for my body shape specifically. So that's how I'm getting the undershell. And next, I'm going to go ahead and take my trusty heat gun here on high heat and I'm going to begin to heat and curve these to match my rib cage so they're not flat. Of course right now it has no shape, no life, but I'm going to heat those, curve those so that it conforms to my chest and rib cage much better than what it does now. Right and here for a quick comparison you can see the difference. This over here, totally flat. Over here it is now heated and curved in to the shoulder slash chest area and then goes down and curves at the bottom here for the rib cage. Okay, so further going along with my heat gun, I heated the back side of this and using my hand folded an angle from this point here up to the corner and this point here up to the other corner just to help give the chest a little bit more definition and to make it look a little bit better if I can get this to focus. Okay, there we go. And also heated it down through the center here as well. And hopefully you can see there is now a sort of divot right where the center of the chest would be. And pulled in a little more here for the shoulders and just kind of evened out eyed up and evened out and tried to get the angles of the rib cage as even as possible. From here I'll be trying it on and just making sure how well it does or doesn't fit and making little adjustments with the heat gun from there. Okay so I've gone through and pretty much finished up all the heating on this and sharpened the lines in the chest area a little bit. Uh, curved this in here to account for the rib cage. Now keep in mind these sharper lines and such aren't really necessarily going flush up against my body because I'm trying to get more of the shape of the actual predator species. So I sharpened some of the lines and did things a little different, mostly just from looking at pictures for reference of the predator or various predators and action figures and etc. etc. You, you do a Google search and all kinds of things will come up. Also finished curving the back here using the heat gun to heat it up and that way it will match up against my actual back, account for my shoulder blades, the curve of my spine, etc, etc. Put a little sharper curve on the sides here. And that's pretty much going to be it for the basic shell of this whole build. This is what everything else from the shoulder cannon, the shoulder, the shoulder blades, uh, the front armor for the chest, the rear armor pieces and such in the back, all that's going to be built on this. So I'm not going to bother to really sand any of these seams until I figure out the exact patterns and placements for all of my armor because a lot of that could just be completely and totally covered up. This is just a base and a base shape for me to sculpt and pattern and make the armor from. Okay, so after having my heat gun blow up, which this is a pretty inexpensive one, so they only last so long. And mine lasted a year of heavy use, so that's pretty good. I'm going to purchase another one. And next what we're going to be doing is the abdominal pieces 1, 2, and 3. This is officially the start of the patterns for the rest of this build. And the abdominal pieces 1, 2, and 3 are plates that are going to overlap. But these ones here I've already heated and I've curved them so they will pretty easily conform to the shape that I have on my base. And all I'm going to do to shape these is heat up the foam.
Once the foam is hot, you can then just begin to curve some shape into it. And already, just from doing that, you can see I already have a subtle curve. I'm going to go ahead and heat the back side, work some shape into all three, and then start gluing all these on. Alright, so I'm going to begin gluing on all these abdominal pieces. These different plates for the armor, they're all going to be staggered offset, like a set of steps. I'll come back and show you that when it's done. But I wanted to pop in real quick and point out that I am using contact cement. And this stuff is very hazardous to breathe in. So I have the doors, the windows, everything open with my fan circulating to help take all these fumes outside. It's very not safe. And I know I use this in every video. If you've done foam builds before or watched videos like this, I'm certain you've heard of this. But if you haven't, you apply it. You wait 15 minutes or until the pieces are dry and aren't like sticky to the touch. And then you can apply them together. However, when you do apply them together, there is no room for error. You have to have everything lined up. So as you can see here, I've used a red sharpie and very lightly just sketched out where my lines are. So I have a point of reference to line up the pieces from the front and then glue them on. Alright, so here is the three pieces glued on, the three abdominal pieces glued on, staggered. Like I said, kind of like steps from one to the next. And now I'm going to use my chest plate pattern that I came up with, which is going to attach here and here. It is meant to match the curvature of the neck that I cut in here. And it's going to overlap, and I'm going to have to cut pieces of EVA foam to either fill the gap or just leave it the way that it is and leave a space there. Okay, with the chest pieces, contact cemented on here. I also put in the two uh, accent pieces, which will be labeled as chest center. Next, I'm going to do the right shoulder over here, and I've already cut this piece out, and I've heated and shaped it. Uh, the actual pattern piece, when it's flat, looks like that. And I used my heat gun to put a rounded shape in it, and I pulled up this edge, and I pulled up this tip down here, and rounded these sides off. I also sanded down the texture, and slimmed these ends down so they will smoothly work its way into the main body of the armor. And I've already drawn on where I'm going to apply my contact cement and I'll come back and show you what that looks like when it's done. Alright, so the next thing I've done here is I cut out and contact cemented the right shoulder uh, accent piece. And I took an X-Acto knife and scored in all these cuts to look like little plates. And this, if you're a Predator fan, you probably already know, is loosely inspired by the Predator from Predator 2. Now, I'm going to use my heat gun on high. Okay, and as you can see, that caused all these cuts to open up and make this look like a bunch of individual plates. Initially, I was honestly going to cut out a bunch of pieces and do a little mosaic, and I realized how insane that was. So this was a nice, quick, easy substitution. All right, so now that the right side is done, I'm going to go over and start working on the left side. And the first thing I'm going to attach is going to be the shoulder cannon mount. You're going to need two pieces that look like this. Now, I don't know how much this pattern is going to help you, just simply because I cut the shape on the inside here to match the shape of my shoulder. However, uh, you can still use the outside to give yourself an idea of the shape that you want, and you can always custom cut the inside edge to fit your shell. And this is going to be mounted here, but first... I need to put a spacer in between these two pieces. So what I did was I sanded off the texture on the edge here and on this inside part. Did the same on both pieces because I have cut some strips of the foam mat an inch and a quarter wide and they're going to be glued along this edge in between the two with a spacer in the middle so that these stay nice and in place where I want them so I can glue them on with the final glue. Okay, I have all my pieces glued together here and I have some plates that are going to go over this. However, before I do that, 
I want to take my Dremel and round off all of these edges here so that it is not so incredibly straight. Alright, and now that has a nice rounded off edge and no longer looks like I chopped up some yoga mats and glued them together so much. Alright, next thing I did was I cut out five of these can mount plates is how it's labeled in the pattern set from Etsy. And I glued all five of them onto the back here offset giving it a look like this. I glue it on four. I've got the fifth one here. I'm going to glue it on next and then I'll come back and cut some detail into these and heat them and shape them and tweak them a little bit. All right, I went ahead and decorated the non-cannon side. The cannon's actually going to mount on this side. But before I glued it on, I decided to do some decorations on this. There's no patterns for this stuff. It's just some random scrap pieces that I cut and trimmed and scored with the exacto knife and scored the side of the foam itself and this right here is just a spare little plastic uh, ring that i had left that seemed to just fill that space up and i've already traced out where i'm going to put my contact cement because next i'm going to go ahead and glue and mount this on okay here is my shoulder cannon assembly all mounted there. Next, I decided to add a collar. So I cut out a collar pattern piece. So it wasn't an original intention, but after looking at various photos of armor, I decided to put that in. So if you have the pattern set, this will just be labeled collar pattern. And this is gonna be glued from, pretty much from where the chest plate stops all around the back to the opposite side. All right, so next I cut a strip of the five millimeter EVA foam. And I cut this strip about four inches wide. And I marked right in the center where it was. And on the bottom is about two and a half, two and three quarters, eh, about two and three quarters wide. I marked the center there and then I used a yardstick and my trusty exacto knife here to cut a center line and then i measured the starting and stopping points for my other two vertical lines that are running up and down here and then i just went and marked every inch through the center and every half inch on the side lines and then i just took my exacto knife and cut in the lines that I wanted then went back through after I did all the V's in the center and then just did the sides. And I've gone ahead and marked off on here exactly where I am going to contact cement this. And if you look here underneath this whole uh, assembly here for the shoulder cannon is a strip of UVA foam I cut just wide enough that it fits in between the actual mechanism of the shoulder cannon and I cut some lines into it and heated it and if you've ever really paid close attention to the costume on Predator 2 the City Hunter it has a track that the shoulder cannon can move up and down on it can slide down or it can move up it's pretty cool so I thought I would add that little detail in okay so I have added on the back piece here and heated it so that everything expanded just like with the plates and all the other cuts that I've done. Next I want to go ahead and put on these left shoulder uh, armor pieces but before I can do that I had to add on the shoulder cannon mount extension piece. I put it on over here with a half inch spacer same as I put the uh, one inch spacer on these, glued it on and lined the front end up so all three of these are even. And that gave me a reference point as to where I could mark this. 
so I can begin to contact cement on my plates. I'm going to put all three plates here staggered so they have a jagged armor effect, kind of like this, just not as extreme. Okay, I have my left shoulder plates glued on here. Adjust this a little bit so you can see how I staggered them. I was going to have them extending out, but it just went too far, so I overlapped them instead. And I contact cemented on the top one, and these other two I just put on with hot glue. And I'm also going to have a bicep piece later, which will have scales like it as well, although smaller, that will kind of come out right in the exact same point that this is. Uh, I want it to all flow together, so I figured that was a good starting point. Okay, so the next piece I've done here is this green piece, which is 3mm EVA foam, and I use the left shoulder spacer, is what this pattern piece is titled, and I took a significant amount of heating with the heat gun to get this to curve and conform to this before I even contact cemented it. I heated it with the heat gun and pressed it into place first to get the basic shape and then drew around it and applied my contact cement. And next I'm going to do the right chest accent piece which slides in right under here and to get the left side I just flipped it over and copied it and I'm going to glue those two on next. Okay so I've glued on the two accent pieces there and I also did two cuts in here and this one I've already heated to expand it okay and there a little heat action on this one causes it to expand pretty much identical with the other one which will give me a nice seam Okay, the next piece I've put on is the shoulder cannon mount cover piece here, which uh, folds over onto the back. And these cover pieces, for example, are good if you're not 100% sure about how far to space these. Three pieces for the thing itself, this will help you. And I'm also going to talk about stuff like this in the beginning because this is one complicated build. Like, there's really nothing simple about this whatsoever. And anybody that's going to attempt this or something similar, props to you and I would also love to see photos as well if you do attempt to do anything of this complicated nature I would love to see it all right so the next piece I'm going to put in here I just simply cut an oval and blunted one end and left the other end round I just cut this freehand there's not a pattern and then I heated it and stretched it into shape with my fingers by pulling and tugging on it while it was warm careful if it gets too hot or just wear some safety gloves and this is going to be glued right in the center here. But this is only 3mm EVA foam, just like all the other various green pieces on here. All 3mm EVA foam. And what I'm going to want to do is make this a little more sturdy. And to do that without warping it with something like hot glue, I'm going to use a two-part epoxy. Mix this together for 20 seconds and then go ahead and pour it in there. So let's take a quick second here to talk about epoxies. Whilst I wait for this to set, I've gone ahead and mixed my epoxy together for 20 seconds and poured it in. What I'm using here is from Harbor Freight Tools. This is relatively inexpensive. It's a quick setting, but not instant setting. I do not like instant setting epoxies. Usually within 60 seconds to 90 seconds, they're already firming up. But I feel like they honestly take longer to get firm enough to really honestly use. I don't know, maybe that's just me, but it comes in two parts. You mix it together. And much like contact cement, in fact, I would almost say worse than contact cement, this is very bad for your eyes and skin. So make sure you don't ever get this on yourself. If you do, immediately wash your hands. And much like the contact cement as well, the fumes are pretty harsh. So I have my garage door open, I have the window open behind me, the front door open with the screen on, and I have the fan blowing air directly from the outside in through the house to help take the fumes out. Also, wearing a respirator is should be common sense and obvious, but I'm going to point that out too. I wear, a res, I wear a respirator whenever I'm using this stuff. And always be careful too around any sort of open flame because this, much like the contact cement, is very, very combustible. So safety first, guys. Always be careful. And if you're underage, under the age of 18, always ask parents or, or, or a guardian's permission before doing any of this. And ask for their help as well. Don't be afraid to ask them. Okay, I went ahead and glued on this piece once the epoxy set. I cut out this other piece, which I am going to stick in with all the patterns, unlike this, because I feel like that's pointless, but this, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, I did put that in. 
And I think this is going to be a stopping point for this video. We've got all the main construction, all the boring, <laughs> quote unquote boring stuff done. All the initial base stuff and the harder stuff in, in, in that sense. And next video will of course be finishing up uh, the, everything essentially. There's more detailed stuff to put on the back. And I'm also going to have to sand all these rough edges, clean everything up, uh, finish the shoulder cannon mount and make the shoulder cannon, although I think the shoulder cannon might be its own video because for it not being a huge piece of all this, it is quite complicated looking. There is also distressing, weathering, uh, various scratch marks, dents, things like that. Predator armor, you know, they have to pass a, a, a rite of passage and they have to hunt. And if they don't die on their hunt, then obviously their armor bears the scars of it. So there's a ton of weathering and all kinds of other stuff to just gouge this thing up before we even move on to sealing and painting and anything. All right, so that wraps it up for part one of the Predator armor build. Uh, hopefully this isn't too long. I haven't actually added up yet. I'm just filming things. I haven't gone into editing, obviously, because I'm talking about... Anyways, I suppose I could have edited it first and then filmed this outro after, but I'm not. Anyways, so, I don't know how long it'll be. Hopefully this will be shorter. It is only like three and a half days worth of work. So that's what I'm going to try to do from now on. Do, you know, three, four days to a week's worth of work. Stop, put out a video, and probably three, four days. Because three, four days I usually accumulate at least a half hour's worth of footage. So I'm going to try to go ahead and do that. And that'll keep these shorter. And as always, thank you to everybody for watching and subscribing. And if you enjoyed this video and you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video and feel like sharing it or the channel, I really would appreciate that. It does help me out a lot. And if you're interested in this or any any other cosplay related things, you should always check out the videos that I have in my playlist. They go back for a year or so. And there is a decent amount of them. And thank you to everybody. I really do appreciate all of you. And as always, have a great day.